guys. So today I'm back with another video on lifestyle photography sessions. And I just wanna give you guys some quick tips on how to achieve those beautiful, dreamy, happy photos that you see everybody getting. I don't know why, but people seem to have this idea that things just kind of come together. Um, like you have a family running and the pictures just come out beautiful. And unfortunately that's not the case, but it is easy once you have your method and your strategy down to be able to get those beautiful dreamy shots. Now, before we jump into the video, I have to tell you guys about my lifestyle online course that I have coming out by the end of this year. Um, it is going to be chock full of information. So everything that you get in this video is kind of like really, really tiny snippet of the full course. Now the full course, we delve into these topics in depth and more stuff. I also have a free download for you guys. It's basically these tips from this video. Um, they're basically just kind of shortened and put into a guide for you to remember things by. So let's jump right into the five tips. First tip. Make sure that your clients understand that, so I have a, a studio room where I have it set up exactly perfect. It's clean, the corner, like the way it needs to be. So if you're doing lifestyle family photography at your client's home, then you need to make sure that they are educated, that they need like a clean space, a clean corner, and it has to be near a window. And you have to dictate with the way that you shoot how that's going to work. So that you need to communicate with your client beforehand in depth to make sure that this shoot and this session is going to work for them. Number two, bring the right equipment. And I cannot stress this enough. Um, I like to shoot with long lenses, but when we're doing lifestyle photography and it's inside of a home, then I need to make sure I'm bringing like a 35 or the 24 to 70. I just shot one with um, my 35 millimeter 1.8, the new one. I absolutely adore this lens. I'm gonna make a video on that too. But if I had not had that lens, then my 50 would not have worked in the space that I was in. I also like to use my Z5 or my Nikon Z6 II, Nikon Z6 for my lifestyle in-home sessions. The Z5 is so light um, that it's just, it makes it so much easier. And you also have to consider your light source. So like I said, you know, it's good to have window light. Um, I also like to bring a continuous light, especially if it's going to be um, small children or newborns. I don't like fancy, scary, you know, flashes and pops of light, but a continuous light source is not so scary to people. And it also makes adults, especially men, um, I think they feel a lot more comfortable with a continuous light than they do with one that flashes. Anytime you're dealing with newborns, I personally do not like to use lights that flash because I feel like it just kind of interrupts them. Number three, use a posed guidance technique. Now, if you don't know what that is, it'll be a good idea to get my lifestyle course. We go really, really in depth on that. But to, to give you a little brief synopsis of it is you put your family in a pose to where the light is flattering to them, especially the mom or the mother or the, the woman, and then you prompt them or you give them some guidance. So you put them in sort of like a pose, which may feel kind of stiff, but then you tell them things to do like whisper in your wife's ear or everybody tickle the baby or, you know, just simple things like that. And like I said, if you want more in-depth ideas on that, you definitely want to check out the course when it comes out. And um, if you get this download, you'll be put on the email list so that you will be on a waiting list for when it comes out, you'll be aware. I have found that the pose guidance technique is really perfect for people. It is a wonderful mix. A lot of people say, oh, we don't want posing. And then a lot of people say, oh, I don't know what to do with my hands. The posed guidance technique kind of melds the two together where you put them in a space, but instead of being like, oh, smile at the camera, Instead of doing that, you, you give them real things, you put them in the great light and then give them the real things to have real connections and real emotions with your prompts. So if you're not posing people into the natural light in a flattering way, then mom might have some weird shadows coming down her face. And those are, you know, images, those are products that your client will either want to purchase or not. Even if you give the whole gallery out to them, if that's included in the price, it's still, um, a product that the, the client doesn't want because they don't feel good about themselves. You wanna make sure that every picture that you take and deliver to your client is something that they are going to at least like. Flattering light is the best way to make sure that your client looks the best that they can. Which brings me to number four, 
use prompts and focus on intimacy. So once you've got them into a pose, you've guided them, then you use a prompt and you can make them laugh or you can make them tell the kids to run around and the, like you can tell one child to tickle another child while that child has to sit still or has to look a certain way or whatever. And it's just really fun for the family. Or you say, everybody tickle dad. And then of course that gets everybody crazy. And number five, you always want to get variety. So you definitely wanna get those shots that are pulled back where you have kind of the scene, but you also wanna get those shots that are super up close and intimate. And you get variety for a lot of reasons. First of all, it tells the story better. Second of all, people will want to buy the full gallery when they have so many images that they don't know what to choose. So guys, I hope these tips helped you. Um, make sure and check out my course when it comes out. Like I said, this guide, you can download for free. And and subscribe if this was educational for you and I will see you guys next time.